Okay, and, uh, all right, so we are recording. So let's make a formal introduction for our listener. Good afternoon, Amanda. My name is Claudio. I'm, I'm calling you from Washington, D.C. From the studio of Fairfax City, we're very humble and grateful that Amanda, Amanda Ten, Tenfior uh, accepted our invitation to our show. Amanda, welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell me, so with everything that is going on in the world with the pandemic and you cannot tour, you cannot go out that much and people die, how is this affecting your life, your family, your creativity, everything? Mm, okay, so my life is, uh, of course, is affected a bit because I can't be as social as I used to and like to be. It's, uh, I am studying medicine, so I'm lucky that I can be still studying and go to the hospital and have a quite normal life. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's a good thing actually. But uh, my creativity, I've been writing a lot, so I feel that my creativity is, is uh, better than in a long time, maybe because I'm like, less things to do and more time to think and relax and stuff. Um, and yeah, and I'm still healthy and my family's healthy, so that's good. All right, that's great, man. So where were you born like in a musical family and then when you began, uh, you know, playing piano or before singing? Um, yeah, I started playing piano when I was five years old and uh, then I started playing the uh, trumpet Yep. Uh, for many years and then I started singing when I was eight with this uh, vocal teacher. You gotcha. And then so you end up, uh, you how you learn to play piano? That's my thing. You, you end up, uh, sorry about that, you end up uh, taking music lessons or you play, you're, you learn on your own? How did you go? No, I had a teacher for eight years. Right. And then, uh, so you, you, you were a little girl, you were play, playing piano and then how you, the, how the singing came along when, when you decided to begin, I suppose that composing music first, right? Writing, writing lyrics. And then uh, it, it took a while for um, you to, to uh, be comfortable and then sing in front of an audience. You have an, you have an unbelievable voice actually. Thank you. I uh, started writing my own music when I was 16. Um, yep. be before that, I had been singing mostly like classical music, like Ave Maria and those kind of so like almost opera. And then I decided to try pop. So I started to write my own songs. Okay. Mm. Your, your family is for your middle name is from Greece. Is that correct? Yeah. You, you, you speak Greek at home or not with your dad and your mom? Oh. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, and then uh, was your, your your dad, your mom were musicians at all? No, no, no. No, no. Uh, my dad is a, a civil engineer, mechanical engineer, and my mom is an architect. I got you. I got you. And then, um, so what what kind of music were you listening uh, growing up before you discovered pop? I mean, when you were, I don't know. 10, 14, 15, what, what, any, any band in particular that you would listen to? So you're very young, so it wasn't many years ago, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I listened to, my mom showed me a lot of Whitney Houston. Yeah, Whitney Houston, I yeah. remember. Uh, and Tina Turner. And I think I listened to some strange stuff, like yeah, Tokyo Hotel, I remember I was, it was a strange German band. And uh, what else was I listening? Like a real revenge. I remember I was listening to. Yeah. And then so you reach a point where you know when you finish the equivalent of here high school, where you you needed to decide, well, I'm gonna go into music or I wanna go to school, and you know what it it was. Did you um, was there a lot of family pressure for you to either go to school or pick music or or they or they were happy with your with your mm -hmm. choice well i i went uh, first of all no there was no 
pressure really i always liked school myself so i decided myself to study medicine yeah and uh, started to be a doctor and uh i don't think i think it was my own choice yeah i always liked school so i just did music uh along with the study you, you were you a very good student i suppose right in in, in high school uh, yeah yeah I guess so. Yeah, I like I like math and and <laughs> science and stuff. I got you. I got you. And then from there, I uh, I assume that you. So, but how? So it is in the things you don't do sort of music full time and you go to school full time. It uh, the, the medical school. It, do do you you have enough time? Does medical school give you enough time for you to? Either write music. Right, right now, you cannot perform that much because with the COVID. But you do pretty mm, much the music during the summer when it's summer there, or or you, I don't know. No, I usually I've done both kind of uh, at the same time. So medicine, at least where I study, is in Trondheim, the city, and it's very it's hard, but it's flexible. So you have time to. We only have like one exam a year, so you kind of uh, you're kind of the boss of your own time. So I maybe go away in the weekends to write music and sometimes for weeks. And then I just, when I come back, I just work more with the medicine. So I've kind of um, done it like parallel. Uh, you, you need to go with, when you say Trondheim, I, I never been there with you. You need to go to a hospital daily and that's where they, or, or you, you need to attend lectures or both, both. Yeah, but you don't have, well, you should, but you don't know you don't have to so it's sometimes i don't go to lecture and then i just read on my own and then i maybe travel and write some music instead but then I come back man you must be very smart no i won't i won't say i'm not i'm not <laughs> no i'm a <laughs> i'm a normal i'll guess but uh yeah it, it has been uh tiring tiring how do you how do you say it yeah tiring, Something. Yeah. yeah sometimes um so i had one year off where i just did uh, music like for a full year and um, but now i'm back doing both but uh yeah it has not always been uh, so easy but yeah it's yeah. a balance balance thing yeah yeah well you know if you can do both right it would be would be great right if you finish medical school and be, become a doctor and then yeah. you music, uh, you you have, yeah. so you have no choice growing up. I mean, you know that you knew that mo music was always there. So even if you have a study or no study, you knew that music would have been a, a, an important part of your life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Always, uh, I always liked music, but uh, I always kind of liked doing. I figured out that I I write the best music. And I have it, I'm like more in a comfortable place in my head if I do both. So if I have like a bit school and then a bit music to, yeah. I'm, I like not like, I don't like to write music every day, every single day of the week. I like maybe having two weeks off and then I write one good song and then having a break and then I write two good songs instead of writing 300 not so good songs i got you yeah that's yeah i think that's how my brain works yeah do you remember the first the first song you wrote ever yeah i mean when you were uh, yeah. i don't know 14 or 15. yeah i remember um i remember the first well the first first was like in norwegian and very bad when i was a kid and then i wrote uh actually a song that I put on Spotify myself, yeah. uh, which, which I actually still like when I was 16, I think. Yeah. And then how would been, how was the reception of that with song when you were 16 years old, nobody knew you? Do you receive a lot of common compliment yeah. hits? Yeah. Yeah. Especially like from like the local area where I come from, I come from this small place. I think people were like, oh, she sings and makes music and it was very people were very supportive that's beautiful man yeah mm -hmm. 
That's great. You have a, you have a, a very unique and distinctive voice. Uh, it's very good. It's very very different. I mean, uh, it's very good. And you, you speak English very well, actually. So you think so? Thank you. Uh, it, yeah, I, I haven't I haven't been speaking for a while now, so I, I noticed that I, it's a bit uh, rusty. No, it's very good, man. Your language is very complicated for me. I cannot even pronounce <laughs> any words, man. It's very, very, very difficult for, for me to pronounce. It. So, so you you say that you don't write uh, lyrics every day. There, there's two weeks you need to study hard, study for your exam, and so forth. And then you you know, then when you're off, you write a couple of songs here and there, and then you go to school, and then so little by little you begin putting your um, an album. Because I see you, you have a lot of uh, EPs, right? Singles, and uh, it's um, the you. Um, and the, the beautiful thing is that um, you, you're still very young, so you have the whole world in front of you. So you don't have to be make a decision right now. Hey, I want to be a musician. I want to quit the school, or just yeah, forget about music. I want to make more money as a doctor and. Uh, and, and do the medical things, and, but if you can do both, right? So that would be great. So for me, like I told you, I'm an engineer, right? I have nothing to do with music, but yeah. I, by music doing this stuff and, and programming and uploading music to radio, and now that a lot of people are listening to radio and I have done over six interviews so far, it, I have no choice. I, I need to do this. It, music is very, very important to me. I listen to, I don't know, at least three, four hours a day in music. Right. You know, so it's, I, I have no choice. It, it, it is important, I think. And um, so I want to, I want to, I was able to uh, listen to your music on, on the Spotify. And um, and I want to bring you to attention a couple, of, a couple of songs and, you know, tell me how that particular song came together and so on so forth. The first one is a single yeah. for the 2020 is uh, uh, Then I'm Feeling Love. Mm. That's a that's a beautiful song, man. How, how, how are you? I think it's uh, my favorite, my personal favorite. Yeah, yeah, it's very, yeah. very good. How the song came, were you in love with, uh, with, with one, guy, one guy at school or something like that? Very, that, otherwise you, you won't have picked the name, right? So. Uh... It was, um, I wrote it uh, in um, a studio that's called Ocean Sound, which is in my home place, actually, where I come from. And it was me and a German girl. We were in the studio. And it, uh, what is it about? Mm. Well, it's if basically you actually, if, you're, if you're uncomfortable, don't tell me. No, I can tell, but uh, it's actually it's interesting because I I had decided that day that I wanted to write about not myself but this invented character uh, that was a girl that used everybody around her to reach her goals. So she kind of got friends with people only for her own good. And then she finds this guy that's very important and it's gonna get her an important job and rich and stuff, but then she falls in love with this guy. Uh, so the song is not really about me, but then in the end, it kind of has a little bit of me in it as well. For example, in the pre-chorus when I sang like, I used to be stronger and I used to be bolder and then I fell in love. I, that's that's uh, me, <laughs> but... Uh, it's not about a guy, or it's more about the feeling of uh, that love can make you weak in a way. And I think uh, for me, that has been the case that I kind of get very vulnerable uh, when I fall in love. I got you. I understand. It happens to everybody, man, not just you. Mm. <laughs> it, happens to, it happens to everybody, so all over the world. So <laughs> when you, you know, I suppose you need to open up to someone and whether you're married or not, and, uh, I don't know, that's, I suppose, yeah. being, become vulnerable is the only way to be, I suppose, but to open it up for somebody, so. Um, yeah. What about Kill the Lonely? That's another, another. Yeah, that's, um, 
I think that's the song that I that I uh, for the first time felt after leaving the studio that this was a very good song. I always have this uh, like I I'm not the type that leaves the studio and like go crazy because I think it's a good song. I usually just think oh it's probably an okay song, but this one was very special and I felt like whoa this is. Uh, uh, special to me and then yeah I wrote it in London with uh, a guy called James Earp very nice guy and uh, it feels that's a very long time ago I think it's like four years ago or something I actually wrote it yeah that's that's a beautiful song too man that one I like I like another one from 2020 single is called at least 2020 from a Spotify point of view. I don't know how, how yeah. long of you did you end up um, writing this one. The other one is called Pressure. Yes. And uh, Pressure, I wrote it in Stockholm with two girls. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's about, uh, it's kind of about love as well because it's about the feeling that you sometimes have to choose between um, uh, how can I say that yeah I think like uh, you say you miss the old me the one you fell in love with it's a line in the song and it's so it's kind of about that you change I feel that maybe I change because I uh, have done a lot of music thing I have changed like and grown grown in a way but that also means that for some people you may be changed the wrong way so it's kind of do you want to change for your own sake or do you want to not change and be with a particular person in your life yeah it, it as a as an artist <laughs> a crazy question as an artist right and as a person are two different things right as a musician as, a, as, a, as amanda it it is easy or hard for you to open up and then write and sing about that happened to you, make you comfortable, uncomfortable, express. No, I think yourself. actually, well, now to talk about it, I think it's hard. But when I'm in a studio, I think it's studio, yeah. almost almost too easy. Like I open up to everyone very easily about very private stuff. So that is not always good either because I think it's. I'm the type that when I meet someone for the first time, I want to talk about personal stuff, not like boring stuff like, oh, what do you study? I want to like really get to know the person. So I usually open up very easily. And that's actually, I think it's nice in a setting where you should write a song, but uh, yeah. The, the, the other, the other, the other uh, song that I really like was, it's called no no thanks yeah that's another another it's another single right from this year right from, i mean last year no, i think that's 2019 maybe i'm not sure i don't remember yeah yeah that's, that's big, another like, another one mm. i really like it is what any um do you when you when you tour uh when you have tour in the past or you 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 play by yourself with your guitar or you go with a band i have a band yeah mm. and then you guys rehearse get together once a week every two weeks how, how that? uh it depends but now we just had a concert in um, in Trondheim. we've been practicing every weekend for uh, maybe two months so yeah. So and uh, so little by little things are opening up in your country that you can you can play in in is it like an open space Trondheim or is um uh, or is like a a close? Uh, no, it was like close theater. for hundred people. So, huh? Yeah, close close theater for hundred people. So uh, it's uh, it has been opening up and then it has been closed again. It's going in like in waves. So we open up a bit and then people get sick and then we close down a bit and then we open up a bit. How often do you, do you, uh, can you do the basic, like writing in the piano or writing in the computer 
uh, at home and then you go to a studio or you go to a studio very often or, or it's a mixture of both? I usually write for myself a couple of times a week where I just get down ideas and write lyrics and have like short phrases on the piano and stuff. And then I go to studio and collect and use the ideas which I have been writing down the last week. And then um, has been the, the, now that because with touring musicians, they cannot, you know, play outside and they cannot play much and because they, 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 the country will say, no, 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 we are not ready, we're not ready. You get, you receive like a, a stipend uh, for musician or artist, you know, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I think you can apply for one, but I haven't, I didn't cancel. Or actually I did, yeah, I got something last year, I think, but uh, I haven't had too many concerts that were canceled. So, but yeah, people, musicians get support from the government. I got you, I got you. So when you're not, you're not, when you're not studying and you're not doing music, what do you, any, any, any hobby that you do in particular or? Anything that you like I, to do um, with no music related? Or no, no. I, Go I, uh, I play soccer. Do you really? Yeah, I played since I was five. So, I, but uh, yeah. yeah. That's very fun. And then, yeah. Hmm? I'm a big, big time soccer fan. Yeah. Yeah. I play with uh, my team. It's like um, we have a team in the medical school. So, we have like we play against other other um, students. Yeah. So that's you, nice. you know you know who Cristiano Ronaldo is, Messi, all these people. Of course. <laughs> that's, <laughs> those are very. Of course. Great. Yeah, Messi's from Argentina. I, I'm. I was born in Chile, right next to it. So and uh, it's a lot of very good playing from Chile. They have played in in Spain and yeah. Manchester United, Manchester City and so forth. So I like that. So what are, what are your, uh, your, your plans for the near future? Are you, now you have a lot of EP, you, you, is it easy to put like a, a CD, an album together where you can sell it online or, or sell it when you do like a, a concert where, you know, you can sell it to the people and audience you will sign and so forth, or most, or you only have EPs at this point. So, uh, I'm planning to write an album, so that's I've started started on it now recently. So that's the plan. Yeah, and it, it's, an album. It, it, it is, is it is it easier to put all the EPs that you have together into one album, or you wanna? Right there from uh, from the beginning. I mean, no, right, right from the, right, yeah, from the scratch. From scratch. So you would put another. On, uh, when when do you think it's going to be? Maybe this year, twenty twenty one or. No, twenty two or twenty three maybe. Yeah, it takes a while. Easy for me to say. Yeah. I have no idea how long does it take. To... <laughs> Did you uh, you record everything you write, or you you pick the best? The big, the best stuff. Uh, what do you mean? Um, so you, let's say, let's say in the next two, three months, right? You write mm -hmm. 10 songs. Are you going to be recording those 10 songs or you write a lot more? And then from there you pick, you pick. I usually, I usually use almost all the songs I write. Yeah. So there's not too many songs that well some songs don't I don't use but most of the songs I, I use. yeah I got you and uh, you know it will be great I mean if you end up recording a releasing a CD you know people on, I don't know Amazon or Bandcamp site like that on Spotify I mean you already have a lot of I don't know. A lot of a lot of hits in 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 Spotify. I mean, it's very people. A lot of people like your music, but it is mm -hmm. it. I I think uh, you need 
I don't know, millions, right? To make a little bit of money. It's not, not much, right? Mm. Right. Yeah. In 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 band camp, in band camp, it's a lot easier because once you um, release an album, um, I think a band camp charge like a one dollar, and and you keep the rest. So it's mm. a lot a lot easier. And uh, and then so um, I have another like three four questions. So what are your so you you saying you want to be uh, you're doing a show in in Trondheim, uh, Zoom, and then how many during the the summer you you know that when they will the government will open up and allow you to? I don't know actually. I don't know. We'll see if it opens up, but I don't think most festivals are canceling now. So. Yeah. Yeah. I I I talked to um I talked to Glenn. I was planning to. To go to uh, Oslo uh, this yeah. summer to see some shows and see hike as a guide, of course, because I like the music a lot, you know. But he told me, no, no, don't buy the ticket yet because we don't, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, and and I like your music, man. So I, I I would I hope to meet you one day and, and see you live, you know, when when things are open up. Yeah. I, that would be that would be great. I would like to see Maybe. you. Before. You, one day yeah you get nervous at all or no performing no well actually before i never like usually i never get nervous like it's almost uh, annoyingly but now lately like last concert i had in Trondheim, i was uh, i was so nervous i almost puked and fainted i was like i don't know what happened I, so i think now because i rarely have concerts because of corona then i just I, it feels like I've forgotten how to do it, so I get very nervous. But usually, I didn't get it very nervous before. Uh, you don't, you don't forget the lyrics at all. You no. It happens. No, but I'm no, no. I'm, I don't forget the lyrics, but I'm mostly nervous for. I'm nervous because I don't know what to say in between the songs. So I think a lot about what am I going to say, what am I going to talk about. I'm not nervous about the singing or the songs yeah uh, is any 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 um i think is and as i say i've never been in, in your country but i think it's a famous play in is oslo where haik as a guide is going to be i think it's called rocky rocky feller if i remember correctly mm. yeah but uh like, i think it's a very famous play. you like to you like to play like um like in festival big places or you like uh like a smaller venues like 200 smaller. 200 200 you like smaller yeah smaller venue i think that's nicer because then people listen more i think i think that's... right because in a big venue you know people are doing other stuff right so yeah well and then the, the, so hopefully you know uh feel free to now mention where people can listen to your music or they, they, I don't know if they can buy the singles at this moment and then your website, feel free to mention any anything you want. So. I think they can buy it on like iTunes and then listen to it free on Spotify and YouTube and uh, Amazon, I guess, yeah. And then um, you have your own website as well or Amanda? Mm -hmm. Feel free to mention so because people can visit. It's, yeah, it's Amanda Tenfjord, uh, dot n o. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I uh, that's all I have, Amanda. It was very very nice talking to you. You have nice a very unique you. voice. You have you know you, you you're very talented, man. So keep it. Thank you. Try to try to continue to do both the medical school and uh, and the music. And, uh, and um, you know, hopefully, if things work out, I will be in your country in the summer when I go and see some shows and get to know more artists. There are so many, so many great musicians coming out of Norway, have no idea. They're, they're no known here in the United States, you know. So my, my goal is to, with the radios, you know, buy your music, buy, you know, everybody's music because I, I spend a lot of money buying stuff and playing playing good music in the radios, all my radios uh, are free and I don't charge anything 24 hours a day, no advertising, nothing. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I can play your music and uh, music for a lot of great musicians to make people happy. So you're, you're very talented, so. Thank you, nice talking to you. Keep it up, thank you. Have a good afternoon, Amanda. Bye. Bye-bye.